Uh, Namdi Olisa Eloka, a, a fixed income and currencies analyst at Zcrest Capital, is joining us from FMDQ Exchange Place this morning to weigh in in our, in our opening calls for today on fixed income side. Good morning, uh, Namdi. It's good to have you on the show. Good morning, Boston. Thank you for having me. Great. Thank you so much. Hope you had a nice night. So uh, let's get on with today's uh, uh, market reading. What's the opening call looking like and uh, the road we've traveled uh, since Monday? If that's giving us an idea of what will happen between tomorrow and Friday, technically wrapping up the month of August. Yeah, so definitely this week has been relatively slow. We've seen a slightly bullish market this week. Yields have trended lower across both the bonds and the treasury bills market. And it's uh, largely driven by the improvement in system liquidity, which was driven by inflows from FAC uh, paid to the state and local government. So market has had a slightly more bullish stance this week. Yields have moderated about 40 basis points in the week to date. So it's, it's looking good in both the bonds and the tables market at the moment. And not forgetting that we have an NTB auction today uh, where market players will be looking to bid for about 200 million worth of securities. Uh, but uh, what's the currency story here uh, play? Uh, if you take a look at what's going on around the world, everything that's happening outside our, our shows, Brexit, trade, Fed face off, and uh, all of that. Where do you think the currency and in portfolio investors' interest uh, is looking like at the moment? Yeah, so we've seen a slowdown in sell-offs, and like we saw in the last two weeks, sell-offs have slowed down this week. The turnover at the investors and exporters window has moderated. We've seen just about less than $200 million traded at that window uh, on a daily basis this week. So it, there's not been much action, and uh, rates have moderated below 3 the dollar at that window. So things are looking relatively stable for now in the currencies market. Yes, we understand that there are still some tensions in the, in the global economy, uh, and uh, we, 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 we continue to watch closely the trade path between the U.S. and China and the monitoring those developments closely, the inversion of the U.S. two- and ten-year curve, and also the geopolitical developments in Europe. But we're still looking relatively stable. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we're checking with you in the days ahead. Uh, from Zcrest Capital, Namdi Olisa Eloka. Thank you so much. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the stock market where Medview Airlines, PLC, the only uh, uh, airline listed on our market, uh, issued a statement, says, uh, uh, according to reacting to some media reports, says it wants to inform its shareholders, stakeholders, and the general public uh, that some newspaper reports that made view that the company has suspended its operations because of all the planes and maintenance is misleading and tantamount to demarketing. Uh, quote here, paragraph two, Medview says the company has not at any time informed the regulatory authority that the NCAA or any other agency nor the press that our operations are suspended. It says there was no basis for that story. So that's the, I think about seven, eight paragraphs or paragraphs statement here. But Medview says its operations have not been suspended uh, based on a newspaper report of August the 23rd. Okay, so let's uh, get into look at today's trading day, taking our cue uh, from where we've been since the beginning of the week as far as the market slowing down. 3% was what we racked up last week and the index was looking like we're heading towards 28,000. Now we've seen a pullback since Monday started. Edidion uh, Iwang uh, is joining us from uh, the trading floor at the Stock Exchange. Good morning, uh, Eddie. Where is the opening calls here? for today. Good morning, Bosin. Well, we've seen a tug of war between the bears and the bulls. Earlier this morning, the market was up 0.05%. As we speak, the market is down in the negative territory by 0.07%. And that's no thanks to the banking sector, which is currently down by 0.60%. And Zenith Bank has posted a 2.6374% loss at this time. So, you know, we're still waiting to see how things go. All the other sectors are on change, except um, industrial goods, which is currently up by 0.68%, and that's thanks to, you know, gains from Cement Company of Northern Nigeria. We've seen about 8.1 million shares. Out of that 8.1, um, about 6.4, you know, come from MTN Nigeria. We've seen a lot of activity around Champs, PLC, GT Bank, Continental Insurance, and Honeyflower. But we're off to, you know, a slow start. Investor sentiment is generally weak at this time. 
between yesterday and Monday, we saw you know a mixed reaction of um, profit taking and sell offs. So we'll just see how the rest of the day goes, and we'll check in by one thirty. But you know, speaking about Medview Airlines and you know their reaction to the news of last week, the company says that the company says, however, their Boeing seven three seven five hundred aircraft, you know, had some technical issues on the way to Abuja last week, as it needs um, an engine replacement, and that engine has been procured. So you know that is in the works. It says it sent its other. Um, other two aircrafts, you know, for for maintenance and checkups, but they're back as right now it's concentrating on airlifting, you know, um, Hajj pilgrims from Saudi Arabia to Nigeria. The um, the share price is currently at, is trading at one naira eighty koba. We haven't seen any activity on Medview since August the twenty first. So we'll just keep an eye out to see how investors react to the statement that was released yesterday. Yes, I'm sure investors will uh, look at the statement released by Medview and put that together with the non-brilliant uh, performance of the company's numbers, uh, which was released just a few weeks ago. Medview is struggling, as it were, when you look at its financial statement. So this doesn't look really good. But again, the flip side, as you said, is that they're repairing the aircraft, they're servicing them, they're bringing them back, and they are still in business. This story, of course, relates specifically to the fact that they're denying that newspaper report that the operations has been suspended and said they are still flying uh, in the skies. Uh, thank you so much, um, um, Eddie. Please keep an eye on the marketplace. We we'll look forward to seeing you uh, later in the afternoon. Eddie John Inwang, uh, one of our business correspondents, live from the Nigerian Stock Exchange trading floor. What's the big story here? The warning is being sent. Nigeria could run out of money if it fails to fix its revenues very quickly. That's a new story. You can find it on Bloomberg. You can check it out. Nigeria could face very serious problems by the year 2024, where Bloomberg says the country's uh, debt could be about 36% of the GDP, currently around 400 billion US dollars. And Nigerians could be paying as much as 74.6% of our revenue to service debts by the year 2024. You need to keep this in mind. Nigeria's finance budget and national planning minister has agreed that, yes, the country has a revenue problem, but not a debt problem. That was three days ago. We'll keep all of that in focus, everyone. But also remember, a very big day today at the Japan International Conference on Africa Development the UBA chairman, Tony Limelu, will be speaking on three issues. Why Africa need to focus inside on its transformation program and why private sector on the continent should be the new oil for the continent. And also, why it is important for us to let the private sector lead from the front. All of this we're covering for you here on Channels Television, Nigeria's news leader. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone.